In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. In case you're wondering who I am, I'm Father Dan. I'm a Spiritan, meaning a member of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit, it used to be called the uh, Holy Ghost Fathers. So as you probably guessed then, yes, I'm right down the street at Holy Ghost Prep. This is my sixth year uh, being there, and I'm here to share a few thoughts about mission as we celebrate in this parish our own call that all of us are part of the mission of the church to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So it's really great to be with you here this morning. And as we begin our celebration, let's call to mind God's great love, God's call to us always to live more closely with him so that we can live more closely with each other. Let us call to mind our faults and failures and let us ask the Lord for pardon and for grace. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Lord God, heavenly King, of our almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
a reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they may have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act too. For you know that gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials, officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. <clears throat> she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I think we all know about the immeasurably positive potential of loving touch. An emotional touch alters the heart and the soul in ways that are mostly unconscious. It can take a lifetime of analysis to get even a glimpse of understanding. But I think our understanding of what it means to touch, especially after coming from COVID, where we all remember had to stay so far away from each other, we couldn't visit people we loved and we cared about. And when we did, we had to stay behind glass. We had to wave at them or just watch them on, a, on our screen from our phones or our laptops. I think that's a pretty good introduction to today's gospel. So many times when we hear the gospel we heard today, we focus on the woman's healing and the little girl's resuscitation. But as Mark tells his story, these are only the backdrops actually to the real action. In this account, I'm sure you noticed, Mark mentions touching seven times. Just a short account, seven times he goes back to that point. And of course, even in scripture, we know that numbers have a great symbolic meaning. And seven is, of course, the symbolic number for perfection. So think of those seven times. The crowd pressed G around Jesus. The woman believed that his touch would heal, and she touched Jesus. Jesus asked two times who had touched him. And finally, after the father had asked him to lay hands on his daughter, Jesus took the little girl by the hand and raised her. Both the woman and the girl's father believed in the power of Jesus' touch, and both received its life-giving results. Like a child who instinctively comprehends the emotional message of a touch, when that woman touched him, Jesus knew that someone had found something that they desperately needed. But did you notice Jesus wasn't content to distribute miracles as by a magic wand or a vending machine. Jesus wasn't here to impress people with his power and have them go, whoa, this guy is like really powerful, really amazing. He came because he is the love of God taking flesh. And the trouble is even to this day, sometimes we ask the wrong question. We look at these miracles, we go, wow, how did Jesus do all that? The answer, because he's all powerful because he's God, which is true. But the question we should be asking is, why? Why did Jesus do all these miracles? Why did he go around healing and curing and touching, touching lepers who people were afraid to even be anywhere near, and he went up and touched them? Why did he lay hands so often? And then we realize the answer is God's love, God's mercy, God wanting to be with us intimately. The difficulty is today we so often reduce a whole notion of church and religion and faith to a bunch of rules you're supposed to follow, a bunch of prayers you memorize and then repeat all the time, a bunch of Bible verses you should memorize and hang up on a beautiful banner, a bunch of songs that you memorize and sing all the time, and then think, good, I'm doing my part. But none of those are the essential. All of those should only be helping us to the essential which is to be loved by God and to love God and to work at that, to grow at that. Because you notice that after that woman knew that she needed that touch of the Lord, the Lord Jesus went to seek her out. And this is a bit surprising because actually if you look in all four Gospels, it's one of the only times in the Gospels that Jesus looked for someone that he didn't know and he didn't, couldn't call her by name, but he wanted to know her. He wanted not to simply perform a miracle, because he wasn't here to prove how powerful he was, but he wanted to start a relationship of love, because that's why he came. That's what he wants for each one of us. So what is our relationship? You know, Those of us who still have that lovely habit sometimes in the evening to look back at the day, or some people do it once a week on a Friday, Saturday, look back at the week to see how we're doing don't make it a grocery list. I said my morning prayer. Whoops, I skipped it on Tuesday. Oh, I got angry at the neighbor. And just make a grocery list to check off. But rather, every evening, perhaps, before you go to bed, ask yourself the question, how did I grow in love with God today? How do I love God more today than I did yesterday? 
Why? How am I allowing myself to be loved by God? What am I doing to listen more to the Lord? What am I doing to share that love with people around me? Those are the real questions of those of us who follow the Lord Jesus. So Jesus' reply to her opened up a new horizon. As he had told others, he told her that her faith had saved her and that she was free to go in peace, cured of her illness. But then Jesus said something, something much more and utterly extraordinary. Jesus called her daughter. How intimate a relationship. He had called others too, his mother, sisters, brothers. He addressed the paralytic as my child. As he once, and he once called his followers disciples. And in a few short moments, we will follow the teachings of Jesus and call God the Creator our Father. So the question is, is that really our relationship with God? Are we that intimate as a child with their father? Then we hear no more about that woman, and we're not ever even given her name, actually. But she knew that she had received life from Jesus and became as closely bound to him as a daughter to her father, as a child to her parents. The woman Jesus called his daughter is a representative of all of us who reach out for Christ's help, trusting that their plea will reach God and will open each one of us to how the touch of God can transform us. And we Spiritans, the Congregation of the Holy Spirit, we try and share that good news of the Lord God and the great love that comes to us through Jesus, guided by the work of the Spirit, who wants to live with us in intimate, loving relationships. We are almost 3,000 members serving in over 60 different countries and six continents. And our charism is to engage in whatever the work the local church has most need of. So among the Spiritans, you'll find us in large inner city parishes and big towns, and in small missions, in jungles, and on mountaintops. You'll find us in grade schools. You'll find us in high schools like Holy Ghost Prep down the street that we founded 126 years ago and still run. In universities like, like Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, which we also founded and continue to staff and run. You'll find spirits and priests and brothers in healthcare, as healthcare workers, doctors, physical therapists who are priests and brothers, professors. Some of us are chaplains in hospitals, in prisons, in schools. Each of us uses our unique gifts and talents as different as we are, but to help others hear the Lord's call to a loving, intimate relationship. And of course, we realize it starts with us. And I hope you realize that this is all of our call, because we are all called to mission by our baptism. And so we look at your marriage. We look at how you are as husband and wife, how you are as mother and father, how you are as son or daughter, grandparents, sister and brother, how you are with the neighbors and the people in the market and at work and at school, your love your kindness, your goodness, your gentleness, your patience, your forgiveness. That is the touch of God working through you to touch others as God touches your life. And that helps remind everyone how we are to live, not just repeating a bunch of memorized words, not just doing certain rituals, but first and foremost, living in that intimate, sharing, loving, deepening relationship with God, allowing ourselves to be loved by God so we can love one another. And that we all share, no matter who we are. So I thank you for being a part of the missions. We all have our different ways of doing it. And today, the, this parish has so generously ag agreed to be, you know, part of the whole Archdiocesan-wide celebration this year, as every year, of their part in mission. And we ask you to remember who you are as part of that mission, that you too may be the touch of the Lord to the people around you.
And now, my friends, let us stand and proclaim together what unites us as one family. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Lord's graciousness, let us offer our prayers for the church and for the world. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to animate your missionary work throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who govern, may God bless them with prudence in their decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick who are suffering, especially Teresa Rock, Eileen Finnegan, Bernard Grill, Ron Polakowski, Gloria Molino, Anthony DiVincenzo, Anthony Martino Jr., <coughs> John Hubbard, Bernard Grill, Francis X. Bell, and Orla Monica. May God mercifully grant them healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For families in this faith community, may they be always open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For all who have died with faith in the Lord, especially Marion Barrett, Luis Javeria Caro, Ricardo Rodriguez, Rosemary Litz, Matthew Hansen, and Stephanie June Hearn. May God grant them the reward he has promised his faithful servants. Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers and answer, and answer them in accordance with your holy will. We ask you through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the loving Father Almighty. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voice as we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we proclaim and celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, which my soul shall be healed.
And let us continue our prayer together. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements. In commemoration of Independence Day, the daily mass on July 4th will be celebrated 9 a.m. and the parish office will be closed Thursday, July 4th and Friday, July 5th. 
Please see the parish bulletin and the notice posted on the doors regarding the mass and confession schedule for the week while Father is away. There will be no 6.30 p.m. confessions Monday, July 1st, and no morning confessions on Saturday, July 6th. We thank Father Daniel Sormani for preaching about the missions on behalf of the Mission Cooperation Appeal this weekend. Please use the special envelopes from the Pontifical Missions Society found near the entrance to the sacristy and place your offering in the special collection box. Thank you for supporting the missionary work of the church. Please place your worship aid in the recycle bin as you exit church. Please pick up a bulletin and use the collection boxes to make an offering. Thank you for your generosity and support. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.